Hello everyone, Deja Vu Sailing with you. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for here. The start of the Volvo Ocean Race happened this morning. I woke up bright and early for it at uh, 7 in the morning. Race started at 8. Um, my mic wasn't working for some reason, but I had like over an hour and a half, two hours of video footage, and I've kind of narrowed it down to about 25 minutes here. So uh, I'm narrating over everything. You can see I was watching the real race live. It was only like a 15 second delay from the simulated race to the actual real race. So it was kind of kind of nice because, you know, sitting there kind of felt like the real deal. Except there were 70 boats online here instead of seven. So uh, it was like your morning commute to work almost. <laughs> but uh, we have a few minutes before the start of the race here. Just kind of looking around at how many boats were going to show up for this thing. We had over 60, almost 70 boats and it was just ridiculous. <laughs> they, you know, they uh, take a look at around this course. You know, every leg start in the Volvo Ocean Race, it starts with more like a, you know, windward, leeward, or a triangular course, import section, kind of wave goodbye to the fans. And then you take off, you know, that line heading down south is uh, heading down the coast and out towards Gibraltar. Um, I'm online right now. Uh, it's been about 14 hours since the race started. It's nighttime, and we're down south of Almira. And uh, we're not doing too bad. Uh, I'm just making a few uh, tactical moves right now to try and make up some spots. But yeah, this was incredible. Uh, you know, I had, like I said, I had a couple hours worth of video footage. This was a very long start to the race, and uh, we had great conditions for it. Though I mean, the wind showed up. I was worried because the, for the initial forecast didn't look that great from what I saw. And, uh, no, the wind definitely showed up. It was perfect out there. And, uh, the racing was incredibly close. I mean, it's a one-design fleet, and, uh, you kind of see me looking over the course here. We go around towards, this is almost towards Madeira, Santo Porto or something. Madeira is down to the southeast, or southwest there. But we go around that island, and then we're going to be heading up to Lisbon. So it's probably going to be about four or five day long race, um, depending on wind conditions. With that hurricane that just went through, I mean, we've seen light air conditions predicted for most of the Mediterranean area and uh, but if I can get on the tail end of something it might might be good uh, it's really cool doing a uh, simulation of the race real time with real weather is what the real guys have because I can sit here and watch the tracker and see what the real boats are doing and it might give me some ideas for tactics or you know any kind of strategy oh they're going south maybe I should go south you know something like that um, so it's really nice uh, we just a minute, a little over a minute before the start of this race. I was nervous here because I saw some, there were so many boats, and I was just like, how am I going to attack this thing? And then I knew what the wind conditions I want and the wind direction. You can see it's a little offset, but that red line on my map is the true wind direction. So I wanted to pin and start, and I wanted to start on this right side and uh, work my way up the course. See, I'm just kind of luffing things here, try to get a little bit of a delay. But there's no collision model in this game, so people can run right through you, which is good. I think with this many boats, it wouldn't work that well. I think people would just be crashing into each other, and you know, you're kind of pinned between a rock and a hard place sometimes. If you're on, someone's on port tech, and they don't have anywhere to go <laughs> to get out of your way. You know, they're going to crash into you, or they're going to hit somebody else. But you see, the real race is about to start. I love these boats. I absolutely do. I can't wait to see them in Newport this uh, well next year. Uh, that's going to be great. But this is not the uh, VOR 65 um, that we're sailing in the game. They haven't implemented that yet. They, I think they're going to. I mean, they're going to put a lot more boats in this game. But they made this 50-foot performance cruising boat um, to kind of somewhat simulate it, but it's still slightly slower, and it doesn't have the canting keel and all that stuff. All right, getting ready for the start. I got a really good start off the line here. You see, the gun just went off. I'm only about five seconds late on the line here, uh, but we got to jump on probably 80 percent, 90 percent of the other of the rest of the fleet. That was one of the first boats to cross the line. If I look to my leeward side, everyone's so far behind. All these guys. I got to jump on that entire crowd right there. So I felt great at this point. I was like, "Oh, this is awesome." <laughs> I'm kind of just trimming everything in, making sure that we just hold our line and try to keep it in clear air because the guy over here had the um, possibility if he gained on me, he could block my air. 
So I was trying to make sure that didn't happen, and I think I ended up running away from him. Uh, I think that guy made a YouTube video too. I saw someone and I, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's me. I was right next to the guy. <laughs> but yeah, I know they're making improvements on this on this game, Sail Away, and, uh, you know, it's a elf. The game's still on Alpha, so, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, the graphics look, you know, for sunsets and sunrise, and, you know, the sun looks great in general. They're, uh, they, I know they're going to want, they're going to make improvements to probably the water graphics and the boats themselves, and, they're gonna put a lot more boats in here. They're, I think they're talking about uh, more land detail as far as getting the heights correct, you know, elevations correct. Because if you go over to Lake Ontario, it looks like you're in the middle of a mountain, <laughs> which is very incorrect. But you can't blame them if they're trying to model the entire world. You know, it's gonna take some time. It looks like Brunel went off on the other end. Yeah, great sailing conditions. I mean, these boats were flying today in the in the real race. And we're not doing too shabby in the uh, simulation either. See, I'm powered up quite nicely here. But we are just smoking the guys behind us. I mean, I'm running away from them. But I didn't quite get the right on the pin end, and that's where those guys over there, you know, they're going to be ahead of me at the windward mark, and they all got a, you know, a huge jump on the line. That's where I wanted to be, but I ended up early, and I had to run down the line. Um, so that hurts us a little bit, but I think I was still in 20th or 24th after two hours of racing in the Alicante area here, and then once we started taking off towards them. Um, on our way through the Mediterranean and out into the uh, ocean, I started losing a few spots, but I'm trying to gain those back right now. Beautiful sailing conditions out there in uh, Alicante today. Isn't that a hell of a story for Axel Noble? Like, what the hell? They fire their skipper last week for some contract breach or something like that. I don't know what the hell happened. And they're running around, oh, we don't know who's going to be our skipper. Yeah, uh. And then they bring him back, and they don't announce it until the night before this race starts. So he's like, oh, okay, I guess I'm back on the team, and now he's got to start racing around the world. Like, <laughs> what kind of mental games does that play with you? You got to lead your team around the world, and you're, you know, they fired you last week, and then decided to bring you back. Interesting cross coming up in the real race here. The boats that went off on the other side, they're all coming back. You know, it's great having a one design in the, you know, a boat that goes around the world because they're just so damn close all the time. I remember the last edition that I went to in, um, you know, 2014, 2015. And they're in the middle of the Southern Ocean on their way. It was the Lake Auckland, uh, New Zealand, up to Brazil. You know, it was one of the longest Southern Ocean legs. And, um, I mean, they're at a section where, you know, they're, like, farther away from land than the, um, the space station, which is unbelievable. <laughs> it's got to be a weird feeling. But, you know, they're all the way out there, and there was a crossing, I think, between Alba Medica and Mapfrey. They almost hit each other. I'm just like, God, these boats are so close, and, you know, it really comes down to the crew. It's absolutely amazing. That's why it's so interesting to watch. It's There's no difference between boats. It's it's all just how you sail it and what kind of decisions you make as far as the uh, weather. But you see, I fast-forwarded here through, uh, through the video. I'm not going to play two hours of footage here. This was about, like, I had two, yeah, two hours and ten minutes of video footage from the racing today. So you see there's no collision model, that guy is inside my boat pretty much with his boat, so... <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't think a collision model would be good for this game right now, I mean there's just too many boats. But you can see how hectic this, uh, this is the first windward mark, and just how many boats, we all came back together, you know, we... <laughs> I had that start where I got a jump on the line, and then people tacked out in port, and then I stayed out on the left end a little bit, and then I went out in port, and they came back in, and then we all just met up, and 
one big clusterfuck about this mark right here. So I can't even see the mark because there's so many boats on the inside of me. I'm just kind of guessing where it's at when I get up here and just... Okay, I guess I'll go now. <laughs> but I love how you can customize the um, appearance of your boat in this um, in this game because everything looks di everybody looks different. Yeah, this is just one big mess. <laughs> so I'm like, well, where the hell's the mark? I guess I'll just start rounding it now. I think it's somewhere on the other side of that Red Bull boat. It's just a mess. I was happy because like we're in the front of the fleet here. I mean, I was 70 boats. I was in the top, top 10 or 15 coming around that first mark. <laughs> And then it was just like frustrating because I couldn't see anything. There's just boats everywhere. And then I had a tough time getting the spinnaker out. There's like a glitch. You know, I have it set up where I don't have to trim everything. The computer does like the cutting ham and the outhaul, so I just need to worry about the sheets and the um, halyards because it's just too much. Uh, you can invite friends of yours to be crew on the boat, so all you got to do is steer the boat and they'll worry about everything and sail trim. But I didn't have anybody. I was by myself. I was soloing it. So I was like, oh, I'll let the computer do that and I'll do the rest of this. The problem is when you're trying to raise a halyard and the computer wants to do something else with the backstay or whatever, it takes the focus off of you and goes onto the computer. So I'm trying to raise the halyard for the spinnaker and it keeps going to what the computer wants to do and stop, you know, prevents me from raising the, the halyard. And I'm like, frustrating is all hell. It happened a few times and I really lost um, patience. I was just like, you know, you should let me do what I'm doing and then do what you're gonna do because I think getting the spinnaker up is a little more important than trimming in the uh, Cunningham right now you know so I think they need to go back and revise that in this game you know a little bit of prior you know prioritizing there these boats just look beautiful powered up the uh, 65s I know they want to change the boat for the next edition but uh, I don't know everyone wanted everyone wants oh foiling monohulls and say I don't know about that yeah, you watch the other, oh, was it, the Amokas, or who the hell else went around? The Vende Globe, I think, was using a few foiling monohulls, and they didn't work. I mean, the things just break. And I know the you know, engineers are like, well, we want to make it work. Well, I think the Volvo Ocean Race is perfectly fine right now, and I don't want to be like everybody else. So I had never agreed with the change that the Volvo Ocean Race has been making. You know, they want to use foiling multi-hull catamarans for the import races and then switch over to these very large... Um, I think foiling monohulls for around the world, and I'm just, you're going to be like everybody else. I mean, what sets you apart from everybody else? And they think, oh, it's going to attract more sailors. I'm like, I think just the idea of the Volvo Ocean Race attracts sailors. I don't think it has anything to do with the design of the boat. I mean, besides being a one design, that's attractive. Um, so I'm not a fan of going away from the 65s. You know, they've only used them, you know, for two editions now. And I think, you know, they need to stick with it. It's just, you know, they can improve it, but I think they need to stick with it. I think it's a huge mistake, um, and there's a lot of questions about, like, the CEO that took over for Canute Frost, uh, Mark Turner, I mean, he came in, made all these changes, and then he resigned. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you come in, you, you flip the table on, like, what the future of the Volvo Ocean Race is going to be, and then you just quit? I mean, I don't get it. And, uh, I don't like what's going on for the future of the Volvo Ocean Race, but for right now, it's perfect. I mean, I love it. I can't wait to see them, um, in person. Yeah, I love this part of the <laughs> they're chasing each other through the fleet of spectator boats. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Just going through a maze of other boats. But yeah, I mean, you have the America's Cup. And they are using foiling multi hauls, and now they want to go back to mono hauls because they're like, well, tradition. <laughs> So it's like, well, now the Volvo Ocean Race is going to do foiling multi hauls. So like, what sets you apart from being anything like the America's Cup? I don't get it. Uh, the extreme sailing season uses foiling multi hauls, so you're just kind of copying everybody. And then, as far as foiling mono hauls, you're just copying the Vendee Globe and the um, kind of like the Amoka 60s. So I really don't get what they were thinking. I mean, you're copying everybody else, and two different boats is just isn't that going to be more expensive than having one boat? I don't really uh, understand the whole thing. But there's a few more years before the, well, 
a uh, couple of years before they start the next edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, but hopefully they'll make a change. I really don't see how it's going to be attractive. It's just going to be like it's going to be like watching the extreme sailing se season, and then when they get into the multi uh, mono halls, it's going to be like, oh, it's another version of the Vendée Globe, but with crew instead of just one person, you know. <laughs> So you see the fleet separation here, I'm kind of on my own. Um, I think I was down in 20th position, maybe 18th at this point. And we're heading up towards the, uh, tacking back and forth up towards the second mark, the second windward mark. After that we head back downwind towards the start line and then off to Lisbon. You know, pretty much out on your own in the Mediterranean, figure out what kind of strategy you want to go. You know, where do you, where's the best wind going to be in the entire Mediterranean Sea? You know, how do you get through the Gibraltar Strait as fast as you can. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, trying to find, you know, detailed weather predictions and what well, what kind of risk do you take, you know, what do you want to do? Yeah, I can't wait to see what this game looks like in the future. I mean, they keep improving it, and they keep getting suggestions uh, suggestions from people. And I was shocked as it is that you get you have absolute control over everything. I mean, you grab, click on one of these lines, and you can trim it. You know, and they only have this boat, a smaller transat race boat, um, thirty-eight foot cruising boat, a catamaran. And uh, some other like traditional sloop. So I think they're going to add a lot more boats in the future because you can, you know, you can only. Uh, I don't know if you can get away with only having like five boats. It's not really entertaining. Yeah, so for leg one, I think I'm going to do this with every leg, but um, you know, I'm going to have a recording, a highlight reel almost, of just the import series. And then um, I'll probably make another video, especially the longer parts, you know, the next... Once we get to Lisbon, the next part of the race is going from Lisbon to Cape Town, which is like going to take 22 days or something like that. So that's going to be a very long period of time to be out there racing. You know, a lot of strategy calls and everything like that, day to day. And uh, so I'm thinking of breaking it up where I'm going to have a video like this for just highlights of like the race start and the uh, import section of the leg. And then have like another video where I just have small updates. Maybe even day to day, like, hey, this, this is where we're at, this is what we're doing, this is what the weather's been like. And uh, make that into a separate video for each leg of the race, you know. With maybe like 15 minutes of footage or something, you know, if we have any highlights. Um, which I already made one update video uh, currently, because we're 14 hours into the race, and we're like I said, we're south of Almira, and uh, it's nighttime. So I took a quick update video, and once the lake finishes, I'll put mash those all together and kind of make it into something. But I thought that was the best way to kind of do it. I mean. Otherwise, it's just going to be a one big video. <laughs> and I'm not, they're not going to have like an import uh, race series yet. I'm not sure. They haven't figured it out. I'm at 27th. Okay, I dropped down to 27th somewhere. I think I gained that back shortly. Yeah, the fleet separation, I mean, after the first windward mark, I ended up in a lot of traffic, and then the guys that rounded before me just took off like a like a rocket, so I couldn't do anything to get up to them.
and skipped forward again here to the final downwind leg before heading off towards Lisbon. Great conditions. I mean, we were just flying downwind today. Yeah, the uh, future looks pretty calm on the Mediterranean uh, for the rest of the you know the time that we'll be out there for the next few days. So I'm just trying to f look at all these weather um, apps that I can and try to find out where the best wind is going to be. Uh, it looks like it's going to be downwind all the way through into the Gibraltar Strait and possibly a reach out towards the Madeira area and Porto Santo. And we, once we round that island, I think it's either going to be a reach or it's going to be a beat back up to Lisbon. Um, where we finish, and it's usually windward conditions coming into um, coming into the Lisbon there. And it's a big, almost like river, and uh, sometimes difficult conditions. It gets really light at times. So in a few days when we get there, it's going to be uh, interesting. But we can't complain about these conditions right now. If we had conditions like this the whole way, I mean, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't complain. This has been perfect. And it shouldn't take us long to get to Gibraltar, I suppose, if it's going to be all downwind. But it, I, I'm seeing varying light wind predictions and maybe a little bit of heavier air out of ways. So it'd be interesting if I decided, if people decide to stay close to shore, or if we decide to go out um, into the sea a little bit more. I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up going out if that's the case. Um, yeah, I don't want to get stuck in the shoreline with uh, with uh, no wind or anything like that. It's a nightmare scenario. <laughs> I'm just glad how many people showed up for this race, and I hope it continues to improve or stay the same. You know, um, I think it. I think it will. I mean, there's so much interest in this game right now, and you know, as people message me on YouTube and say, you know, hey, you play sailing games, I'd really like you to get this game. And I waited a while. I wasn't sure about it, and then I finally looked at it and saw a few people playing it on YouTube, and I was like, okay, I definitely got to get that. So I'm glad that I did. And uh, the participation in like public races like this to you know mimic the real life races, I mean it's just great because we're doing the Volvo Ocean Race while the Volvo Ocean Race is happening. So it's just kind of like it's surreal in a way, and to have 70 people participating is great. And of course, the th one thing I was questioning is like, how many of these kids are going to be online like all the time? <laughs> how can you afford to do that? You know, I have a I have a very very busy schedule, so I can't do that. But we'll see how how good we can do. I'll be happy either way. Anyway, hit that like button, subscribe. Much more to come. This is going to be a long nine month series. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a little while.